Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Friedman from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts, and Harvard Medical School, where I'm director of our pancreas center at Beth Israel. In this Mission Cure video, we're going to go over what excrement pancreatic insufficiency is, who is at risk for developing EPI, which is also referred to as PEI or pancreatic excrement insufficiency in some parts of the world, and the symptoms that are associated with it. Specifically, what is EPI? Who's at risk? Understanding symptoms of EPI, treatment, and learning more about this. And we hope this will be very helpful and instructional. Simply put, EPI is when the pancreas doesn't make enough digestive enzymes, and the excrement pancreas is critical in digesting everything that we take in our diet. So if your excrement pancreas is not working, you wouldn't be able to digest and absorb nutrients, which is potentially life-threatening. And if you have excrement pancreatic insufficiency, you have difficulty absorbing nutrients. That includes fat, protein, carbs. And as a result, can lead to malnutrition, vitamin deficiency, and significant symptoms that we'll talk about. EPI usually develops slowly over years, but in some patients, this can occur over weeks to months. This is common in people who have pancreatic disorders, and this includes pancreatitis, especially chronic pancreatitis in perhaps at least 20% of individuals with chronic inflammation of the pancreas can go on to develop EPI. Cystic fibrosis, about 90 to 95% of everyone with CF or cystic fibrosis develops EPI and usually in the first year of life. We also know that pancreatic cancer can be associated with EPI, perhaps 20 maybe as high as 30% of individuals with pancreatic cancer can go on to EPI. And especially if you've had surgery for pancreatic cancer, but surgery on your pancreas for any other reason. If you re remove enough of the pancreas, then not unexpectedly, you won't make enough digestive enzymes and hence will have symptoms. There are some other rare genetic causes, something called Schwachmann-Diamond syndrome, also untreated celiac disease, where you have a lack of stimulation of the pancreas because of the intestinal disease. We can potentially see this in people over age 50 with no other known issues of your pancreas can lead to this. The classic symptoms are what we call steatorrhea. These are pale, oily stools. And one of the most sensitive issues is that the stool sticks to the walls of the toilet bowl, can't flush it down. Floating doesn't really count. You may have unexplained weight loss because of the malnutrition. You can have abdominal symptoms, which are common. So beyond this diarrhea, steatorrhea, patients may have bloating, abdominal distension and gas. You may have cramping along with this. Other symptoms might include chronic fatigue and issues related to malnutrition, such as muscle loss, skin and hair issues. There may be loss of fat-soluble vitamins in the stool, and these include vitamin A, D, E, and K that your physician may want to test for. Vitamin A deficiency, you may have a certain kind of rash and night blindness. Vitamin D deficiency, it affects bone and you'll have bone loss, such as osteopenia, osteoporosis. You can have vitamin E deficiency that leads to certain kinds of anemia or nerve issues called neuropathy or retinopathy. And with vitamin K deficiency, you will bruise or bleed easily. So if you have any of these symptoms and you have a history of pancreatic disease, you may wanna to talk to your doctor and get tested. One other condition that can be associated with EPI is diabetes. Diabetes from any cause, including type 2 diabetes that's now more common 
in the US up to 25, 30% of individuals, especially being overweight. And if you have diabetes, which is endocrine dysfunction in your pancreas, over time, this can be associated with exocrine insufficiency, which is EPI. So if you have diabetes, no other known exocrine pancreatic disease, and you have steatorrhea, these other symptoms, talk to your doctor about being tested for EPI. If your doctor believes you have EPI, then the standard treatment would be with pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy, also called PERT. We'll talk a little bit in another video about how do you diagnose EPI, but if it's believed you have EPI, your doctor may just go ahead and treat you with pancreatic enzymes. These are capsules that you will take with the first bite of each main meal and maybe taking them in the middle or towards the end of the meal, depending on what your doctor recommends. These pancreatic enzymes have to mix with your food. So you need to take it with the food as you're eating, not 20, 30 minutes ahead of a meal or much after you've consumed a meal here. And your doctor will go through how to adjust dosage based on the amount of food you're taking in, especially the amount of fat and how to take them potentially with snacks as well. If you would like to learn more about how EPI is diagnosed and dosing of pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy, please check out our other videos.